Welcome back to a special edition of White Sox Weekly, live from the Hilton, Chicago. Welcome to 20, White Sox Fest 2016. I'm Connor McKnight. Joining me, and this is uh, this has been pretty special last news break. I want to tell you. I mean, if you're if you're not here at Sox Fest, you are you're really missing out. Um, Willie Harris and Carl Everett and I. No, it was really just two of you doing some freestyle. <laughs> I mean, this was this was some good stuff. Uh, just just some free running a little bit. Clear your mind that way you can relax and do this radio show and have some fun with it. I can't rap. You know, I was just saying, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the you got the pipes for that, Carl. I mean, that's, that actually sounds pretty decent. I mean, look, be honest with me. How many times did that kind of stuff go on in the clubhouse? You know, going back and forth. Well, between me and him. Yeah. I mean, is this a is yeah. this a regular thing? You guys yeah. know how that went? With us, with us, you know, yeah. we always have fun. That's that's the thing. If we're not having fun, you know, it, hey, you might as well stay home. I mean, I, I I try to rap. I I drop a line here and there. Nah. Uh, here and there, you had yeah. you had you had ten set. You had at least three lines. But I mean, I didn't even have time to think about it. So, it was kind of right off the dome. But we always try to have fun and stay loose, man. And and you know, life life is too tough, and the game of baseball is too tough to be too serious all the time. Yep, I agree. We, we had we had Alex Avila on. He's the brand new White Sox catcher here for 2016, coming over from the Tigers. And we talked about that same thing. You know, just the point where you gotta. And Todd Steverson and I were talking about it too. You got to get out of your head at some point, you know, whether it's whether you're going well or whether you're struggling. At some point, you just kind of got to leave your head and just be you. Uh, to a degree, yeah. Sure. Uh, I'm always going to be me, so I, I, I really don't leave my head, but I get out of my own way, so, so to speak. So what's the point where you know you said to a to a degree? What's yeah. the point where during a season you got to check yourself back in? Well. When you decide that you don't know why you're out there, <laughs> so I mean I, I've never needed that extra motivation okay. because I've, I've always had it. So uh, I have a job to do, so I go out there and do my job. And anything that gets in the way, you know, I, I pretty much gotta, you know, knock that over like dominoes. You gotta get out the way because you you're stopping me. And if it's myself, yeah, I, I gotta put I, I gotta take myself to the side and say, hey, get get on. Get where you need to be. So uh, I, I think it's due to having coaches coming up as a young kid who's sure. always put me on the right path and just you go play hard. I mean, if you're going to be out there three hours, play hard for three hours, then go home. And so I've never took the mentality of uh, taking a break when I'm playing. So You kind of the same way? Oh, I'm, I'm somewhat the same way, but, you know, we're – we're definitely two different players. Uh, his game was a little bit more, they expected more from him than they expect from me uh, throughout our careers. You know, Carl hit in the middle of the lineup, three, four, five. Yeah. You know, I was either the table setter or hitting at the bottom of the order or pinch hitting coming in the bunt or the face to closer. So our, our roles were different. So therefore, our mindset was different. Uh, he had to have a mindset as far as a grind daily. I mean, there were days where I'd come to the ballpark and, you know, there's no chance of me getting in the game. So, but you know, you're still there mentally. You have to be. You're still yeah. there mentally, yeah. but, yeah. you know, he used, he wake up in the morning, he know he's playing, you know, so he, he can kind of gauge and get himself ready for that mentally. Me not knowing is different, but definitely uh, being a great team player, um, supportive, and then when you get your shot, you know, those guys are going to support you. you. The 25th guy is just as important to that roster as the 11th guy. And see, Chio, Chio is one of those guys that can keep me loose. Yeah. You know, when it seems like I get too serious or something, he's a guy that's going to keep me loose. You know, so he keeps me laughing. You know, sometimes he say I'm too serious. Sure. <laughs> but he keeps me loose, like like here when he's doing the rap stuff. You know, that that's something that can get me going. We're probably gonna have to hear a couple of lines too. I mean, I don't I don't want to put you on the spot or anything. And then you know, you don't have to do it now. Are there any producers? Any producers in the building? Mm, there's plenty. Yeah, no, we got we got plenty of producers. I mean, LS is friendly to this kind of thing. I mean, I'll drop a line, you sure. know, later on whenever we get ready for it. Okay, you know, you you tell me when you're ready to roll, and we'll just put it on. Maybe we can even find maybe back at the studio, Mac can find some sort of you know like a sample or something like that to lay down underneath. <laughs> yeah. 
We kind of roll this over, call it, you know, Socks Fest 26. And I just come in with my, oh, yeah. Well, you got that practice. <laughs> you have that down. I'm amazed. Oh, you know exactly when to put it there, too. That's hey. fantastic. Oh, God. So, what are you doing? Um, you're you're be a hitting coach this year. Yeah. An, an advanced coach. rookie ball. Uh -huh. And I know we talked, and Carl, you can speak to this, too, but, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the approach, the mental, you know, kind of uh, the differences between, you know, being an everyday and being a pinch hitter kind of thing or, or being a kind of a, you know, next guy off the bench. What's, you know, how do you take that mindset and teach that to, to kids at, at advanced rookie? I think at that level you got to try to just teach them uh, how to be ready all the time. That way they don't have to get ready when they're called upon. Sure. Uh, Obviously, everybody is different as far as their games go, their, their type of, their style of play. Everyone is different. Uh, and I think as a hitting coach, you just got to try to instill in them, let's just be consistent. Let's, let's just try to be consistent. And then it depends on the player, what type of player they are. If they strike out a lot, let, let's focus on less strikeouts and putting the ball in play a little bit more. And just being consistent on making good, solid contact and, and manufacturing runs. That's what leads to W's. He's Willie Harris. He's Carl Everett. We're talking a little White Sox baseball here on WLSAM 890. It's a special edition of White Sox Weekly, live from SoxFest 2016. Do you think that, you know, talking about bringing kids up and, you know, t teaching and coaching at that level, you know, we've seen in baseball kids, 20-year-olds, 19-year-olds come up in the last handful of seasons and just wreck this league from the plate. Is that, you know... I tend to focus on, you know, just what that's done to the game. Did you guys, do you think that's a different shift from where things have been? You know, you see Ken Griffey get into the Hall of Fame. He came up at 19. I mean, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, did you guys get that sense that there were kids then that could wreck a league the way you've seen some now? Um, well, I can speak to that. I, I got to the league when I was uh, 21, 22. Right. And... It's just a process a lot. When, when we were coming up, you had veterans that can really play. Sure. And not too many young guys were going to move those veterans out of the way. And so uh, it's, it's a different game now. So younger, stronger. Um, a lot of teams are going with that. Um, but you got to have that mix now. It's more of a mix. Uh, teams back then really were going with just veterans, veterans and a sprinkle of young talent. Now the younger guys are, cause I, I think now kids are playing every day. Yeah. And so they're getting a little more sense of the game. And the only scary part of it is, is that you hope that they don't burn out real fast because they've come up so quick. And and if, if a young kid comes up and hit a, a spot where they're, the mental part of the game, this is the real tough game because you're out there every day. You're coming up at 19, you probably play 20 games a year. Right. You know, so now you got to play 162. So if they run into a spot where it's really mental, I think that's, that's the part where it separates the younger kid versus the veteran. So the veteran's going to have to help a younger kid, especially when they go into a little spot where it hits them mentally, and, and, and they have that difficulty. So uh, it, it's, it's surprising to me that a, a lot of young kids are getting up here and doing it like that because of the grind. But it's not so surprising because they have the ability. Are you surprised at all to see, you know, the offseason the White Sox have had, you know, bringing in a guy like Todd Frazier at third base, a guy who can mash a little bit, Brett Laurie, who's, you know, looking to get back, but definitely a solid dude up the middle of the diamond. I, you know, I look at that, you know, young core of a, of a handful of players that this team has, guys like Chris Sale, guys like Jose Abreu, guys like Adam Eaton. I think you've done, you know, some pretty good things to, to add in, like you said, Carl, some of that veteran presence. You know, Todd's been around, Brett's been around. You got a kid up the middle in Tyler Saladino who's you know playing his what do you want to call it second taste of Major League Baseball. He was here a little bit last season, but you know I, I kind of like the balance of, of of young and old that this team has uh, struck through free agency and trade. Um, I like the way this team set up. Um, I don't really speak on a subject if I don't know much about it. I don't know much about all the players on the roster. Sure, but I can say this about Todd Frazier. I had a chance to play with Todd Frazier. The city of Chicago is gonna love this kid, man. He he gets after it, he goes hard every day, and he's got a lot of energy. 
And and just for something for you guys to know, he loves Frank Sinatra. So that's his that's his walk up, right? Yeah, I, mean, I mean, he comes to the plate with Frank. That's that's what he listens to in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, it's it's more than just his walk up. It's, really, the way you're talking about it, it's like maybe it's a little much. It's in the showers, in the hot tub. And <laughs> that, that's what he likes, man. But you know, he's a player. He's definitely a player. Uh, well, guys, thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it, Carl and Willie. Thanks a, a ton. Can you uh, can you take us out? Can you lay it down? Oh man! I mean, I don't. If you don't want it, oh, See? we got a beat. You yeah, hear that, Carl? I, I, I told you to be. I told you to be here. Oh yeah, man! Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, come on, Jill. My yeah. name is Willie Harris, and I'm on the go, hip hop nonstop. I'm the king of the show. Yeah. All the ladies in the house think I'm one of a kind. I throw a rap on the ladies that'll blow their mind. We want to check out. We'll see you later. We about to go and get some gravy on our rice and beans and some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's Willie Harris. He's Carl Everett. We got plenty more coming up on White Sox yeah. here at Sox Fest 2016. Oh, WLS right AM 890. WLS. Wow. <laughs> hey, that was fun, man. That was fun, man.